Hey guys, welcome back. This is Grimace63, back at it again with another Star Trek online video. Um, this is going to be an expansion of my first video, kind of a tips and tricks, a little bit of a leveling guide, not too much, I was already covered. But um, basically what I've gathered here in the first three weeks that I've been playing this game. Um, now in case you guys don't know, uh, Star Trek Online is an MMORPG. It uh, was available on the PlayStation Store just about three weeks ago. This Tuesday it'll be a full month. And I downloaded it the first day, and I've been playing it every day since, and I really enjoy it. I mean, it's 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 a true MMO, it's a true grind, uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, the game's massive. There's there's so much you can do. It's free to play, uh, but it relies heavily on microtransactions. So, to start off, at the beginning, you don't have to spend any money, you know, by all means, just go through it, enjoy the experience. But no, later on, if you want to be competitive... At some point, you're more than likely going to have to spend a couple bucks. Um, if you don't, you can do it without spending any money. It's just going to take you more time. You're going to have to save up to lithium. You might not get exactly the ship that you want, but you'll be able to get something comparable to it. So keep in mind, you don't have to drop in any money into this game if you don't want to. But, you know, if you're probably going to end up having to if you don't want to, to grind out for, you know, $150 million to buy a ship or something. Um now, as far as the leveling goes, as I said, I've already covered this in another video, so if you're new to the game and you want to know how to get to level 50, yeah, it's simple. You go in here through missions, and you start running all of the missions. Uh, the earlier missions, you get a lot of XP for doing. You know, once you start getting up here in Romulan, Mystery, Cardassian Struggle, Breen, Borg, I mean, you're getting almost 10,000 for every mission that you complete. So, uh, by the time you get down here to Borg, and you're at Fluid Dynamics, you should be close to level 50. Um, I mean, you're you're going to want to be level 50 if you're going to try to pass Fluid Dynamics on your own. But uh, Fluid Dynamics is one of the best missions. I've run it, oh god, probably at least a dozen times because you get an anti-proton. Um, you get a choice of anti-proton beam or uh, cannon. And um, my role is very reliant. But the, the build that I'm going for is going to be mainly anti-proton, so I've run it a bunch of times. And um, as I said, by the time you hit here, you should be level 50. You have to go through and do the grind. Some of these missions are downright brutal. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of go over here and go over there and then walk back here and then go over here and try to find this console. And it's it, it's a lot of that. And it, it gets frustrating and it is a grind. But, I mean, it's an MMO. That's what MMOs are. It should be in the definition somewhere that an MMO is equivalent to a grind. Uh, but yeah, just doing the missions, they'll get you up and leveled, you know, so definitely just go through, do the missions, grind them out, and by the time you get to this point, I mean, you're going to be level 50, you know, I mean, you're going to have to be level 47 to complete this mission, so um, you should be close to level, you should be close to level 50 by the time you get to this point. You know, other than that, you do, there are some encounters that you can come across in space, uh, deep space encounters that you can get into, and you know, they're a good spot for some um, XP. Usually, every time I do them, I'm sure you're probably getting around four or 5,000 XP uh, between the two waves. So they're kind of good to, to break things up and, uh, uh, you know, just get away from the monotony and, and the grind of doing all the missions. So definitely, if you see them, don't hesitate. It doesn't really matter what level you are. You're going to be joined by 15 or 20 other ships, and a good majority of them are going to be high level. So you don't really have to worry about it too much. Just go in. Uh, learn from them the best that you can. If you die a bunch, you know, it's going to happen, especially in the earlier levels. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. Now, as you're leveling up, you um, every 10 levels, you get a free ship token, which you can use to purchase a tier-relevant ship. So if you're, once you hit level 10, you'll get a free ship token. You can buy yourself a tier 1 ship. Uh, level 20, you get tier 2. Level 30 is tier 3. Level 40 is tier 4. Level 50 is tier 5 and tier 6. So, um, you'll get some, you don't get any tier six, uh, tokens, like you're not gonna be able to get yourself a free tier six ship. Um, uh, everyone's been telling me you get one for tier five, but I swear to God, I didn't get one. I thought they stopped at, at, uh, tier four, but I mean, a bunch of my fleet mates, they've been telling me they got them for tier five. So I don't know if I just accidentally deleted it or what happened, but I didn't get one when I turned 50. Um, but other than that, you can just go to, um, earth space dock, you can go to deep space nine, pretty much any space station uh you can go and you go to the ship ship requisitions and it'll have a list of in the beginning levels you get a lot of ships towards the end levels you only get a, a couple ships to choose from and you just go right down there in the ship requisitions take a look at it pick out the ship that you want i recommend as you're going through the levels uh get different types of ships 
you know, get yourself a carrier, get yourself an escort, get yourself a science vessel, you know, play around with the vessels, figure out what ships you like. I like the escorts because I get the, the increased maneuverability. Um, escorts are generally going to be more DPS. Carriers are going to be more tanks and healers, and science vessels are going to be more of like a controller type character. Now, um, that's basically the way, like when you first start up the game, you have the choice. You can select your faction. Obviously, I went Federation, if you can't tell from my ship. But uh, I went Federation, and then you can choose what kind of officer you want to be. Um, you can be engineer, tactical, or science. Uh, again, I want tactical, but you can choose anyone you want, and anyone can run any ship and run any role. So you're not limited. Like if you go tactical, like I did, you're not. You can't just only run DPS. You can get yourself a carrier. You know, you can you can run um, engineering uh, boffs and you know boffs or bridge officers, but you can run engineering boffs and you know stuff like that. So you're not really limited. But in a perfect world. Engineers are going to be in the carriers, tactical is going to be in the escorts, and science are going to be in the science ships. And each ship kind of does perform its own role. As I said, you know, your carrier, they're going to be a tank slash healer. You know, they're going to get a lot of threat generation built onto them. They're going to spec into, you know, threat generation. So all the enemies are going to come after them first, and they're going to have a lot of self heals. Hopefully they'll have some team heals. Um, but you don't really have to rely too much on team heals. You'll be healing yourself most of the time. But mainly, they're, they're going to try to soak up as much damage as they can. Um, now, the science vessels, they're kind of going to be going around. They're going to be offering buffs to your team and debuffs to the enemy. They've got some pretty cool abilities like Gravity Well, where they launch it out and it sucks all of the, the enemies in the area into one spot. And then they've got something like, you know... Um, uh, scramble sensors, where once they pull them all in, they drop the scrambled sensors, and then all those enemies are fighting each other. So, you know, a lot of cool stuff science officers can do. I have to say, out of everyone that I've met, I have met the least amount of science officers. Pretty much everyone's going engineer or tactical, which, you know, makes sense. You know, the most people are going to go DPS. You know, it's just, it's the easiest one to go with. It requires, for the most part, not in every situation, but it requires the least amount of skill. You're, you're the damage dealer. You know, you go in, running into battle, you know, Leroy Jenkins yourself in there and, you know, mess some shit up. But, again, in the perfect world, it's it's going to be based off if you're an engineer, you're going to be in a cruiser. If you're a tactical, you're going to be an escort. And if you're science, you're going to be in science. But, again, it doesn't have to be that way. So, like, we'll take a look here at my ship. Um, I've got the um, Tier 6 Advanced Escort. I also purchased the Tier 5 Multi-Vector Escort, so this is technically a Multi-Vector um, Advanced Escort, Tier 6. So it's technically what I have. Now you can see down here, um, see with my mission, with my weapons, I'm primarily going Anti-Protons. Eventually these will all be Anti-Protons once I uh, can get something that's a little bit higher than 513 DPS from this beam array. I'll switch it out for an Anti-Proton. So um, I'm running mostly Anti-Protons here. Uh, so down here on my tactical consoles, I'm specking into anti-proton damage, you know. Um, I said, these consoles are expensive. Not even going to lie. They they get pricey. This one right here is going an ultra rare um, 35.59 anti-proton damage, probably going for 15, 20 million EC. So they get expensive. But if you can get one, you're lucky enough to get a drop. Or as you can see, I've got a green in here, you know, 26.2 anti-proton damage. It's 26.2 as a green is better than no anti-proton damage, so I don't have a problem running a green there. Now, my other ones, they're just giving me extra beam uh, weapon damage, which isn't going to be as powerful as the straight anti-proton damage. But, I mean, again, for now, you know, it's it's what I can afford, it's what I have, and I'm, I'm happy with it. I would have to say at this point, three weeks in, there's probably not more than a half a dozen characters that are truly OP you know, for the meta, the way the meta is right now. So if you're not one of those half a dozen characters, do not feel bad. You're in the same boat as the rest of us. We're all noobs. Unless you were playing on the PC before here, you're in the same boat as the rest of us. So do not feel bad if, you're, if your ship's still a little weak. You know, they, they'll they get up there. They'll get better. So again, here in Tactical, I'm running all uh, weapon damage buffs, you know, up here in Science. For right now, since I'm kind of going for a glass cannon build, um, I've got the glass part down. I don't necessarily have the cannon part down yet. So um, I went ahead and I put in some um, shield capacity. So all my science is running shield capacity. Now my engineering is just kind of a filler right now. I haven't been able to come across the uh, uh, EPS conduits that I'm looking for, for uh, to increase my um, 
uh, trans power transfer rate. So right now I'm doing this one. This gives me plus four to weapon power setting. And this is my fire bringer. And this is my multi-vector uh, module. So they'll probably end up getting removed at some point in favor of EPS conduits. But I mean, as of now, and it is what it is. Now, all these I got just from running the missions. Uh, this is a shield array. I, honestly, I don't remember where I got it. It's not that great, you know. Um, it's, it, it's it's pretty decent, you know. I mean, it's got uh, almost 7,000 maximum shield capacity. But, you know, again, I just picked it up from doing a mission. Uh, this was another one I picked up from doing a mission. This is part of the, the Breen missions. Um, so you can definitely get this from running the Breen. This one is from, there's another one from the Brain, so I've got the two set here on the Brain. And then this one is from the Ancient Obelisk Technology. This one pairs with this omnidirectional beam array that I get. And the reason I'm rocking that is it gives me, for the two set, 10% anti-proton damage. So for me, I'll keep running it for that extra 10%. I mean, that's, that's a fair amount of damage, so I'll definitely keep that. But again, all this stuff was just came from running missions. I didn't spend any money on the um, exchange for any of this stuff. Now that kind of brings me to something I wanted to mention earlier. As you're in the earlier levels, guys, I mean, don't buy anything from the exchange. I promise you, you're just going to waste your money. Anything that you're able to use at level 20, you're not going to be using at level 40. It's just, I mean, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have better stuff by then. So unless you're like a weekend warrior and you only play one or two hours a week, um, don't worry about buying anything until you hit level 50. Just stay off the exchange, save all of your money. Everything that you get that you can't use, go in here to your replicator, go over to recycle, and sell it all back. Um, you know, like I got a bunch of this stuff that I'm not going to use. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the sell price is 4400 Go down to the bottom, it's 4000 So I just go here, I'll recycle it, and you can see I got 4000 energy credits for it. So, um... Recycle everything, save all of your money. Just save it. Just keep banking it, keep banking it. You know, I don't sell a lot of stuff on the exchange. Pretty much all of this 3.8 million that I have has come from just recycling equipment. You know, just keep recycling it. If you don't need it, you're not going to use it. You don't think you're going to use it later, go ahead and recycle it. Now, I'm sure some of you guys know we're doing, this weekend is the um, increased upgrade weekend. So they're doubling experience for upgrade points and... Um, doubling the chance of uh, increasing the rarity. So upgrading is very simple. You just do it straight through here. Um, let's say I was going to upgrade one of my beams. All right, I just go ahead and put it here into my inventory. And then I can go over here to my inventory and select it. And then I would just go to upgrade and it brings up this window right here. Then I go in here to tech upgrade and I'd select whatever upgrade um, R&D material I want to use. You put it right there, and then you go down here and you click Apply Upgrade. All right. Now, once this top bar right here goes all the way up, it's going to go up in level, up till you get to level 14. Once it maxes out at level 14, then this line is going to start to increase, and then you're going to get an opportunity to raise the rarity of it. So right now, this one's a very rare ship weapon. So the next one, it'll go up to an ultra rare ship weapon. And then from there, I have the ability to move it up to an epic weapon. Um, as you can see from the uh, from my inventory, I've been able to do that twice here. It's very expensive, guys. It's very expensive. If you can't afford to do it, just do it as slow as you can. Um, save up your stuff for weekends like this where they're doing it. I think it's like four or five days. It started Thursday, and I think it ends Monday. Um, so you get the, the extra experience for that. So definitely, you know, do it whenever possible. But, you know, keep in mind, it, it's expensive, you know, so you might not be able to do it. Now, um, as far as it goes with your boffs, they're bridge officers. So you've got bridge officers, and each ship has different slots to put the bridge officers in. Like this one, I have um, two tactical spots, an engineering spot, and a uh, science spot. I have this one universal spot, which means I can put any type of boff in there that I want. I decided to go tactical. Again, I'm tactical DPS, so I put an extra tactical in there. And you also see that I've got a couple of these guys doubled up. Um, now, this is just to help out with cooldowns. So, like, I'm, I'm primarily beams, um, so I fire at will is a big one for me, as well as overload one. Fire at will will allow you to target all enemies in, in your area. So, instead of just focus firing on one enemy, it'll attack every, every enemy that it can in that area. So, I want to keep this up as much as possible. So, this ability lasts for five seconds, or it lasts for ten seconds. Now, when I click on it, 
and I activate one of them, they both go on cooldown. One goes on cooldown for 25 seconds, the other one goes down for cool, cooldown on 20 seconds. So it lasts for 10 seconds, so I'm really only going 10 seconds without having this ability up, which isn't too bad. If I was only running one of these, it would be every 25 seconds. We're like, well, it's only a five second difference. You can put out a lot of damage in five seconds, I promise. So that five seconds is big. It makes even more sense here on my overload. Um, overload, I pop one, goes on cooldown for 25 seconds. The other one goes on cooldown on 15 seconds. Again, this ability lasts um, This ability lasts for 10 seconds. So it's only down for 5 seconds. So this thing is basically constantly going. It's constantly hitting. It's constantly hitting hard. Now I decided to go with attack pattern beta. This is my main attack pattern. It gives, um, it debuffs the uh, my targets. So if I'm going fire at will, it will debuff all of the targets. 39.9% all damage resistance. So it takes away 30 39.9% 39.9 of their damage resistance. Also takes away some of their stealth. So it's a good debuff to put on your targets. Um, I use this one mainly for the flight speed strength. It gives me 123.6 flight speed strength for 5 seconds, which allows me to get out of tractor beams, allows me to get out of those undying tentacle crap that they, they throw at you. Um, also has a bunch of other buffs in there. I'm not going to go over all of them, but um, they're really good, and this is a good one to have on your ship. Now, my engineering slot is dedicated all to healing. Um, engineering team one gives me almost 7,000 hit points, which on my current ship takes me up about 15%. So when my hull hits 85%, I pop this and bam, I'm up to 100% again. All right. With the emergency power to shields, this is my main shield heal and, uh, it gives me about 2000 to my shields and, um, which is, is good. It's not great. I'd much rather have emergency powers to shields three, but I haven't been able to find the, uh, the training manual for it yet. So um, once you have one of your buffs selected here, you can go click on the ability and it lets you know all of the abilities that that uh, bridge officer has the ability to learn. And then it's just a matter of you going on the exchange or going to the, um, the training man manual vendor and buying those manuals. They're not all available. Some of them we have to wait for. You just have to have to pick up. Hopefully someone will sell one on the exchange. But um, these are all the ones that my, this guy has ability for in that tier one. Here are all the ones he has in Tier 2, and then Tier 3. As you can see, once I get the ability, I am going to change this to Emergency Power to Shields 3. You can see that um, that gives you a quite a big boost on the shields. So eventually we'll move into that, but again, this is what I can do for right now. Now again, the Science, they're more of a support class. Um, and as you can see here, they've got a lot of support and a lot of controlling effects. So, like, this one's attack on Beam. Uh, if you hit them for all 10 seconds of the pulse, it takes almost 3,500 away from their shields. So it's definitely a good one to have. Tractor Beams, I don't use them too much. They're on automatic, so whenever they pop, they pop. Um, they help out a lot with the smaller ships and keeping the capital ships where you want them. But, again, it's not one of my main powers. I don't use it a lot. I do love this Scramble Sensors, though. I love popping this on a capital ship and then watching that capital ship destroy all of its uh, friendly ships. You know, it'll give them an AOE confused for 9.2 seconds, and they just, they target all their allied ships. So this one's really good one to have. I absolutely love it, and it's part of my main rotation. I use it all the time. Um, I finish it off here with Tactical Team 1. Another one offers a lot of good buffs. One of the main reasons I use this one, as you can see the bottom perk, is it distributes sh shield strength to shields receiving damage for 10 seconds. So if your left shield goes completely down, your other three shields are up, it's going to automatically take power from those shields and put it into the one that's damaged. So that helps a lot. Like, that'll, that'll keep you alive. I'm not sure we've all been in that situation where we're holding down on the left stick and our shields aren't recalibrating and we're just listing off to the left or to the right. I don't know if it's happened to you guys, but it happens to me all the time. So I definitely like having this there to kind of help out with that. Um... Now that brings me to another thing with the abilities themselves. You have the ability to put a lot, most of your abilities on automatic. So like I will go over here on my Beamerang. I have it set to power, auto executes whenever possible. And you can toggle this by hitting the R1 um, on the PlayStation 4. You also have uh, auto executes 10 seconds after the start of combat, 20 seconds after the start of combat, or you leave it here on manual. I have it set to auto execute whenever possible. So as soon as it's off a of cooldown, it's gonna automatically pop itself again. I do the same thing over here on the um, Beam Array Overload, so that way they're always constantly going. I keep Attack Pattern Beta. I keep that down here as um, 
I keep it on manual because I'll pop that one when I want to use it. Same thing with my heels. I keep my heels set to manual. I don't want the computer doing them. I want to have more control over them. So that's, again, that's a personal preference. I keep both of these set to uh, manual. Now, as far as my science abilities, I just keep them all automatic. Uh, I don't really do much with them, so I just kind of let them do their own thing, and um, they help out a lot. Same thing with uh, my actual abilities. You know, I'll keep most of these on auto, but some of them won't go to auto. You know, like Tactical Initiative 3 doesn't go to auto. You know, you can only control it manually. You know, um, same thing with the Tactical Fleet 2. So I'll leave one of them in there. Now, as far as my ship abilities, the only one that I keep on auto is the Shield Capacitor. It's a heal, but it's... I've got my primary heal over here on manual, so I'll keep this as a secondary heal on automatic. It just kind of helps keep things going. Now, I don't know, maybe when we get bigger into the game, because in most games I don't keep, I don't do automatic casting, I don't, I don't like it, I'd much rather have more control over it, but with the way that this game is set up with these wheels, it's so hard to find the power when you want it, um, and if you're like me and you're constantly messing around with the powers, they're always in different spots, so, again, I'll keep it on automatic for now, maybe once I start getting in and I'm not so much of a noob, I'll, I'll take it off automatic. Now, if you look down here in the bottom left, right by the hole, uh, my whole percentage, you can see me moving that little indicator switch over. Now, you have four different settings on here. Again, I'm tactical DPS, so 99% of the time, I'm on my weapon setting. Now, if I'm taking a lot of damage, I will switch over here to shields, give myself a little bit higher shield regen, but know that I'm taking a huge hit on my DPS, so I really don't do it too much. Only time I switch over to this one to speed is if I'm just trying to get somewhere quick. I, don't, I won't ever do it in an instance or in a mission or anything like that. I'll never move it over to speed for that. But like if I'm, if I'm just traveling somewhere, yeah, I'll move it over. Auxiliary, I don't use anything that needs auxiliary power. So I never, I'm never over on auxiliary. So I just keep it right here on, uh, on my weapon damage. And um, my weapons are always hitting as hard as they can. So now, as you can see here on my weapon damage, um, by native, you have 100 points in, in weapons. You can see mine's at 121. I got them from some different buffs, like that was this one, this science one right here. This increased that to by four. So I've got a couple other ones. I think there's one here in my shields and some of the other stuff, and it, it'll definitely raise up. So now when I fire, if I were to fire an enemy right now, it's doing the maximum amount of damage that it can do. All right. But as I continue to fire my beams, that 121 number will go down and will go down and will go down. Once it hits like 80 or something like that, you know, I'm doing a lot less damage than I am doing at 121. So that's one of those benefits of rocking those uh, EPS conduits over here. It keeps your energy transfer rate high so that your beams are always hitting as hard as they can. Um, just a little food for thought there. Um, other than that, uh, if you guys, once you hit level 50 and you start doing the STFs, the special task force, those are everything listed here in the PVE queues, you know, your atmosphere assault, board disconnected, vicious cycle, those are all called STS, special task force. You can start going into these and they give you different rewards. Most of them give you a choice of marks. Some of them will only give you Romulan marks, but most of them will give you a choice of marks. So after you've completed the mission, it pops up at the end, choose your reward, and you select which marks you want to get. So once you go ahead and you start selecting some, you can go in here into Reputation, and uh, you can start running daily missions and hourly missions and stuff through here. These are not actual missions that you have to go and actually do stuff. It just, you set it, you forget it, and you come back in 20 hours and it's done. So like you can see here, I have two hours left here on this mission. But you just go here and you select an empty project slot. This is one of the hourly missions, so I just go ahead and click on it. Usually I don't do the hourlies, but just so I can show you what it is, I'll show uh, I'll do one for you. But then you can see here during the um, daily mission, if you look off to the right, you see it takes 15,000 energy credits, 2,000 expertise, and 3,000 Dyson Sphere marks. So for the hourly, it should be about half that. 7,500 energy credits, 1,000 expertise, 15 Dyson Sphere marks. So I go ahead and do that, and it sets. Now, when this hour is up, I go back in here, I will click on it, and I will get a uh, little Romulan lockbox that I can unlock, and um, I'll get some experience. Now, you can see up here the, uh, by the overview, that shows you how much experience that you have. Like you see here on New Romulus, I'm at Tier 2. So when this is done, I'll be clearly into Tier 3. So once these levels go up, you get access to this store, 
And this store started off, I had pistols. Then when I hit tier two, I had rifles. I'm not sure what comes next. But like down here on Dyson Command, I go to that store. This one's actually giving me access to some consoles. You know, so as this one goes up, I'm not sure what I'll get next, but they're supposed to get really good. You know, as you get up to tier five, you're supposed to get some really cool consoles and stuff like that. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that. This 8472 counter command, um, you get rifles and yeah, looks like they're the pulse wave assault uh, rifle, the shotgun like rifle. And then here in the Delta Alliance, you can get more rifles. So right now, none of this stuff is, to me, is worth 7,500 to lithium. Nah, I'm good on that. I'm not going to spend that. All this stuff is easy to come by. I'm not going to spend it on one of these weapons. Might spend it on one of these consoles. I'm actually going to go in here a little bit later and see if there's anything worth getting through here. But more than likely not. It's only tier one. I'll probably save my to lithium till the end. And um, yeah, so that's definitely what you do with the reputation and, and, the, and the benefits of doing those STFs. Um, oh yeah, take a look down here at the event calendar. As you can see, this will let you know what's coming up in, in the world. As you can see here, we got this uh, up, uh, item upgrade weekend. It started Thursday, and it ends on Monday. So you got five days there, double XP on the uh, upgrading. And then you can see next week, and I'm really excited this because this is our first real event, is the Crystalline Entity. And if you go, if you look right over here on the right, it kind of shows you... The, this is what it is. It starts September 29th, which is my birthday, by the way. Don't worry. You don't have to give me anything. And uh, it's going to go on. Oh, wow. It goes on for almost a full month. That's awesome. So the Crystalline Entity threatens entire worlds. Join our team of 10 players to face the Entity and stop its rampage. Definitely excited about this. Not really sure what to expect. I'm not going to look up at any YouTube videos or anything like that on this one. I actually want to be surprised about this and um, just kind of go in blind. So I'm definitely excited about this. This will start next week. Um, I know there's more. I mean, there's just so much more that I, that I want to tell you, and obviously I can't think of anything right now. But, um, what else? What else? Oh, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about weapons. You know, one thing that I've noticed here in this game is there is no best. There's no best ship. There's no best weapons. There's no best console. There's no best abilities. All right, these ships that we have... They're shells. That's all they are. It is just a shell for whatever we decide to put in it. All right. The ship does not make the captain. The captain makes the ship. All right. So keep in mind, what I've noticed here is every time you go up in level, you're getting about a 20% increase. Like you, when you jump, you have a tier five ship. When you get the tier five U, which you get with the upgrade token, you get about a 20% increase. You get the extra bridge officer slot. I think you get an extra device slot, a little bit more hull. So you're getting about a 20% increase. Same thing when you go from a T5U to a tier 6. You're getting about a 20% increase off of that tier 5U. You know, um, you're definitely getting better uh, buff stations. You're getting better tactical slots. Like, this is perfect for me. It's got four tactical slots. I'm a tactical DPS. I don't want a ship that's only got two or three tactical slots. That doesn't work for me. So... Just keep that in mind. There is no best. I like the anti-proton weapons, um, for one, because they look really cool. And uh, for two, they do a lot of damage. And I was lucky enough. I mean, I can, I can just farm uh, fluid dynamics. You know, I run that a couple times a day and keep getting these. Do they have the best rolls on them? No. Are these going to be the same anti-proton weapons I'm going to have in six months? Probably not. All right. I'm going to be looking for anti-proton weapons that give me buffs to damage and to crit. You know, like all of these um, uh, accuracy buffs, they don't really mean much to me. Like, I mean, accuracy on a beam weapon, it, I mean, I'm firing seven of them. You know, if two of them miss, it's not that big of a deal. You know, so accuracy is not that big for me. For me, it's all going to be crit chance, crit severity. That's what I'm going to be going for. Maybe damage. But, I mean, that's, that's what it's going to burn down to. So, yeah, these are probably not what I'm going to be using in six months. But, I mean, it's the best that I have right now. And um, that's what I'm going to be using. So just keep that in mind. Like, I mean, if you guys, if you don't want to farm uh, fluid dynamics for these weapons or you don't feel like buying them or you don't think they're good enough, uh, by all means, you know, go anti, uh, go uh, uh, phase Polaron, go Polaron, you know, do it however you want to do it. Now, a couple things I am going to tell you. You are not going to want to put cannons or dual cannons on the front of a carrier. Could you get away with it? Yes. Do you want to? 
Not really. The turn rate on the carriers are so slow, you're going to have a hell of a time keeping the front of that ship faced at the enemies at all times. You know, I mean, it's, it's just going to be hard. The ship doesn't turn that fast. So, something to consider. But I have seen loadouts on YouTube of carrier sh or uh, cruisers with cannons on them. So, I mean, it's not that you can't do it. It's just, I probably wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um, but definitely get the best that you can afford. You know, uh, it's what I always tell people, you know, you just get the best that your pocketbook can afford. If that's what it can afford, it might not be the best, but I mean, you're, you're going to be competitive. You know, I mean, if you're a good pilot, you're good at flying the ship, you know, you understand the tactics. It's not all about, it's not all about damage. You know, there's a lot more to this game than just the damage. Um, other than that, as far as it goes with the, uh, the bridge officers, um, I don't concern myself too much with the bridge officers. Like, I got a couple greens. This guy, I mean, he's common. You know, I don't think I'm using him for anything. I think I just got him. But, like, I don't really concern myself with the rarity of them yet. Um, that's going to be something I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on later on down the road. At this point, I'm more concerned at what they offer me than what their rarity is. So, I mean, again, if, if all you have is a white, no big deal. Oh, this guy's got a bad weapon. Let's switch that out. There we go. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, see, I've deleted too much stuff. I don't even have uh, armor I can put on this guy. Oh, well. Jeez. See, that's what happens when you delete everything. You don't have enough stuff to equip your new guys. Well, that's all right. I'll get more stuff. It's no big deal. Well, guys, uh, I think that's going to be it. I know the video's long. Um, I mean, as I said, if you guys can't tell, I'm a talker. I mean, I can talk your ear off all day. And uh, so if there's anything that you guys feel that I missed, maybe I need to address in another video, by all means, uh, let me know in the comment section. Um, definitely a shout out to the everyone that's liked and watched and subscribed to the video so far. Definitely appreciate it. You guys are putting me on my path to hopefully not having to work anymore. Don't worry, I know I am a long, long, long way away from that. But hopefully one day, you know, we all have dreams. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you have a great one. If you Again, if you have any more questions for me, if you guys need help out with anything, don't hesitate. Just uh, get, send me a message, and um, I'll do my best to help you out. But I uh, hope you guys have a good one, and uh, thanks again for watching.